There we go. And so um, just welcome to everyone here. Um, and thank you for joining us in the iMoot. And a special welcome to our two presenters, Harley Owens and Sam Taylor, uh, presenting on supporting the delivery of postgraduate education to the defence and security sector. Uh, and uh, thank you to you both for giving up your time today and really looking forward to this presentation. So over to you. Okay. Well, thank you. And um, what we're going to do is we're going to switch off the webcam now while we're presenting and then turn it on again at the end uh, for questions. And um, we have made this slide, uh, our slides available to you. So if you do have the luxury of two screens, you could actually have how, uh, the PDF up open in another window, nice and big, so you can actually see what we're talking about. Um, so, yeah, let's turn the camera off. And get going. OK. So um, Aurelie and I would like to thank you for joining us. Um, our presentation is supporting the delivery of postgrad education to the defence and security sector. Um, what we hope to do is give you a guided tour of what we do as a team, um, where we actually sit in relation to Cranfield University and the Defence Academy for the United Kingdom. Um, the barriers that we face uh, working on a very secure military base, uh, we're going to discuss some of those as well. And also, um, we've got a couple of really, really good case studies of um, some of our academics that we'd like to share with you in the ways that they're using Moodle to support a very diverse range of students. Um, there's two of us presenting, so um, if you do want to write questions in the chat, um, we'll try and answer them. Uh, we're going to monitor Twitter as well. Um, I, I'm not sure if you've seen it, but um, we've actually uh, got a little sort of um, Google Map question there, just so we can see where you are in the world watching this, because it's always interesting to see. And when we present back to our bosses later to say, thank you for letting us um, present, this is what we did, and these are the people we spoke to, um, it'd be really, really good to show that map. Okay, um, I'm Lori Owens, um, and this is a, a little bit about ourselves. Um, as you can maybe hear um, from my voice, I'm from France. I've lived in the UK for 11 years. I'm a former um, teacher in modern foreign languages and IT in secondary, secondary schools. Um, I have um, started working at Country University in 2006, and I have been supporting staff and students in the use of the virtual learning environment here at CDS for the last eight years. Um, First, we were using Blackboard, and then quickly we moved on to Moodle 1.7 at the time in 2007. Okay, and um, I'm Sam Taylor. Uh, my background was um, I used to be a lecturer in dance, and I also taught a few modules in, in sports science. Um, I have been working at uh, Cranfield for you know, almost three months, um, but before that, I spent eight years working at Southampton Student University in their e learning team. So um, I used Moodle as a lecturer when I was teaching dance and sports science. I then used Moodle a lot in my eight years at Southampton Solon. And um, yes, moving to Cranfield uh, in March has been a big eye-opener in the way that they use Moodle and the different sort of worlds um, that a mainstream university lives in versus one that is on a very tightly secured base. So, um, this is us, almost us. This is where Cranfield University is. So we are employed by Cranfield University, which is a very um, intensive research, uh, research intensive university. Um, Cranfield have the contract to deliver postgraduate education to um, the UK Defence Academy. Uh, it's located in Bedfordshire, so it's between London and Birmingham, two quite major cities, and it has the benefit of its um, own airport. So that's quite interesting. Um, those of us that are based at the Defence Academy refer to it as the main campus, um, and they do have their own technology enhanced learning team there on the side. However, they um, they have Blackboard. So where we have Moodle, they have Blackboard. So we do some really awesome courses at Cranfield. Um, all of our students are postgraduate, so that, um, it's a completely different type of student body to what other universities are used to. Um, there are eight main themes uh, that have been divided into four schools. So just to give you some examples of some of the awesome masters that we do, um, you've got the School of Aerospace, Transport Systems and Manufacturing, and they do things such as aerospace dynamics, aircraft design, gas turbine technology, automotive engineering and applied nanotechnology. So 
That was pretty awesome. Um, then we have the School of Energy, Environmental Technology and Agri-Food. So these um, students study things such as um, biofuels process engineering, offshore ocean technologies, uh, community water and sanitation, environmental engineering and integrated landscape ecology. So awesome titles again. Um, then we have a School of Management who do um, things such as supply chain logistics, managing people in global careers, corporate responsibility and business economics and finance. So not as sexy as the others, but very important. Yeah, traditional. Yeah, a bit more traditional. <laughs> but then down the bottom, you can see here, we've got Cranfield Defence and Security, and that's where we come in. So it has its own school based at the Defence Academy, and our degrees are just the best. So we do things <laughs> such as defence simulation, forensic ballistics, gun systems design, and military vehicle technology. So, yeah, we win. Um, so here's our school, uh, the little dot on the, on the map. Our school is the Cronfield Defence and Security uh, School. It's located at the Defence Academy of the United Kingdom, between about Swindon and Oxford. Uh, it's about two hours drive from Cronfield University's main campus. Um, it's not usual university to set up, as you can imagine. It has armed guards, um, secure funds, as well as lots of people in uniform on site. We must wear name badges at all time too, so it's a, it's a military base. And here's the main um, tagline from our website. We have um, a, a close relationship with the MOD, as this says, the Ministry of Defence, as well as foreign countries and their MODs. Uh, we do have a unique set of facilities. We have um, shooting and explosive ranges, the wind tunnel, guns and tanks too. Our typical students are mature postgraduate students with a mixture of military um, and civilian students from the UK and overseas. So we, we are reaching out different um, types of students. It's quite a broad range. Um, a large proportion of the courses run as part-time. Uh, typically, it will run as pre-reading, one-week intensive teaching on-site, and an assessment. Um, we have two main intakes of courses, which are September and January, and some others in between. Um, and you never know, we might um, have some of our students designing um, some of these um, uh, Back to the Future <laughs> vehicles. <laughs> um, so, we might get a badge for them. Yeah, I don't know, do we get our Back to the Future badge? We'll find out. <laughs> So as you can imagine, working on a secure military base is um, very different to being able to work at a, a mainstream like, institution. So uh, for a start, you can't have, uh, you can't use uh, USB sticks or memory sticks. Um, there's a blanket ban on those. Um, I've yet to try plugging one in, but being as every day you see guards walking around with big dogs, I really, really don't want to do that. You stopped you on day one, didn't you? You stopped, yeah. <laughs> I was about to put my memory stick into the machine and already just leapt across the office and just screamed at me. So, yeah, I, I, I shudder to think what would have happened. So, yeah, so no memory sticks. Everything has to be done um, online or using uh, a CD ROM, DVD. Oh, it's a, it's a nightmare. It's a very strange world. Um, there's also uh, restrictions on downloadable content. So if we were to share our screen with you using the big blue button, uh, we wouldn't be able to because you can't download Java. Um, there's also restrictions on um, streaming content as well. So you know, the luxury I used to have of using Skype from my, um, my workstation at my old job, I can't have anymore. So um, anyone on, um, at Cranfield University at the, um, at the base has to book one of two rooms, or video conferencing rooms, and you have to use the software that's in there. But they're the only rooms available to you. And we also suffer lots of bandwidth issues. So we're constantly being throttled, which is a nightmare. So you wouldn't be able to probably watch much online um, when it comes to doing bulk downloads. today. Yeah, so do, doing things. Yeah, yeah, it's, yeah. it's crazy, yeah. So, Having to do bulk downloads from um, Turnitin is um, a very long drawn out process. And we have um, moved to my house today to present to you. Yeah, so if you're wondering why it's going so well, it's because we're in Aurelie's kitchen. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it's the only place we could actually get it to work. 
Um, there's also um, Wi-Fi has only just been introduced, and even though it's just been introduced, it doesn't mean that it's site wide yet. So um, doing cool things with uh, you know, bring your own devices it isn't happening quite yet. Hopefully, it will be in the future. And then there's um, the multiple login issue. So um, staff and students they have to log into the machines using one set of logins, and then you have to access your emails with another. And then oh, it's it's crazy. So every single um, student that comes and studies has to have an IT induction, has to have a DLE induction, they have to have a Turnitin induction. Um, so lots of barriers. However, you know, the will is still there and the students still enjoy it and the staff are still fantastic. And this is our Moodle. Um, this is uh, what our Moodle page looks like. It's called the CDS DLE, um, as you might see here. Front field defense and security virtual learning environment. Um, <clears throat> we're currently running it on Moodle 2.5.9, awaiting an upgraded 2.8 this summer, hopefully. Um, <laughs> you can access it um, at the URL on the screen, but we also put a link on our um, iMoods uh, 15 sessions page, uh, so you feel free to, to go down there. We, we have a little video about what we do at Front field if you've not had a chance to watch it there as well. Um, feel free to access and go to the, um, this page here, the Getting Started for Student page. Um, it's an, a, 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 sorry, an area available to all. Just click on um, Login as Guest when you prompted to log in and it'll get you there. Um, then once people are logged in, so our users, they access their courses via the SMI Courses a Quick Link or Tab here. And um, they will um, 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 go to a list of their own courses, so anything they enrolled onto using a blog called navigation, they will see under there. Um, so that's how we, we manage their, their access. So there's a couple of support guides that have been written for students that actually sit within the BLE. Um, so there are a set of getting started guides. So already just mentioned the student one, there's also one for staff as well. So they can actually go in and teach themselves how to use the BLE. Um, as uh, we've mentioned, our students are quite unique. They're all postgraduate, which means that they're all mature students. Some of them may have come from a um, undergrad background, whereas some of them may have not had any academic background. Therefore, things such as the personal and academic skill support is really vital for them to help them with their study skills. There's also a guide about uh, the uh, assessment regulations, uh, Turnitin submission support, because all assignments, or well, pretty much all assignments, go for Turnitin. But we've also um, developed some staff-specific pages, so things such as course design, so how to build a really good Moodle course, um, Moodle exemplar courses, and we've just started using Mahara, so there's a Mahara guide in there for the staff too. Right. Um, this is an example of one of these um, um, typical pages that um, staff will have. So um, as this is the first page you, you, you see that from our website, I don't know how well you can see, but there's a menu on each page. Uh, the menu will have each section listed. We have for each section the section title and an icon, which is automatically uh, replic replicated into, into the menu. Uh, so navigation is um, enabled by that menu, whether they use normal topics page or a one topic per page. Um, <clears throat> under um, this specific page has been built for external examiners access. Um, every course, and that's all our postgraduate certificate and master's programs, um, have a series of admin pages. So you've got the library support pages, uh, information, um, course information, as well as an external examiner's page. Um, most coursework, as Sam just said, is submitted using Turnitin via the CDS VLE. <coughs> via our VLE. Um, since September 14, the administrators uh, do not print the coursework and don't burn them onto CDs to give to the external examiners. So we have to find we have to find a solution. Um, <clears throat> and the external examiners aren't necessarily allowed to see the course content material, but more the output, and therefore um, they had to they can't, we can't give them access to Turnitin submissions because Turnitin's enrollments aren't granular enough to just give them view only access. So here we've got a template version of, of that page and it has general material for a course uh, for the examiners. So their handbooks, uh, course handbooks, forms for them to fill in. 
And then uh, below that, for each module, we have a, a series of four folders that will contain uh, the papers uploaded by the course team for them to review. Um, in general, um, well, all the feedback we've had has been positive. The external examiner has been welcoming uh, having this kind of landing page to review the course assessments. So that's something that's worked really well in terms of managing sort of administrative process. Um, these are um, a, a quick list of some of the other technologies that we use on site. Um, the, the one we've already mentioned is Tenetin. This is a, um, a proper integration uh, to, to Moodle. In uh, 2007, Country University Senate has made submission to Tenetin for all summative coursework compulsory. So we've been using it for quite a long time. Some courses have exemptions from submitting module coursework by Tenetin due to the nature of the work, as you might imagine, some of them are be classified or secret even. Um, most marking now happens within Tenetin too, in grade mark. So the, our staff have, have really been embracing the, the system. And that's what's uh, one of the key things that has guided uh, people using Moodle. Because they were using Tenetin and they were already in Moodle, they got to use um, well, enhance their pages because while they were there, they might as well just provide other things for the students' activities and resources. The other um, technology is the turning technologies, and these are the um, turning point clickers, if anybody knows them. They're just these clickers that staff can borrow for voting system activities in class. Maple TA here, here. Um, this is the math assessment software. It's not actually integrated with Moodle as such yet. But staff use the URLs to uh, Maple TA in their module pages where needed. So for math testing assessment. Um, Ensemble here, the uh, video media streaming server, uh, is a Cranfield University uh, streaming server that we have for the whole of the university. Uh, we use it to store, compress, and stream videos that we embed in, in the Moodle module pages. So uh, I mentioned previously about um, there's a limit on the amount that you can stream. And we have both WebEx and vScene that we use here. So WebEx, you can book out and um, do video conferencing um, using those two rooms. However, vScene is something that we use in our global classroom. So um, lecturers could actually book the global classroom. And it's just basically um, like being able to have um, like a class of students beamed over to another class of students. So you feel like you're in a giant virtual classroom. Um, we also have Mahara. Um, it's just uh, been installed. Um, I've spent the past sort of six, seven years working with Mahara at Southampton Solent, and I'm very thrilled to have it here at Cranfield, which means I get to play with it all over again and not make the same mistakes I did the last time. Um, and then back to the future. Back to the future again. <laughs> yeah. uh, and then um, obviously we have Blackboard. So um, we don't really support Blackboard, but we have yeah. had to if, we need, if needed to. Um, some of our lecturers. Um, even though they teach at the Defence uh, Academy, they're also lecturers on um, courses that are delivered at the main campus. And as I said before, they use Blackboard, so therefore um, they have to use it as part of their teaching. However, I think they want to use Moodle secretly. Yeah, I think secretly. Everybody likes Moodle. Everybody likes Moodle. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, uh, we've put together a few case studies here. Um, there are case studies that we'd like to share with you, um, hoping to show some of the applications our staff and, and students um, have seen in Moodle, uh, but also opening to any discussions and suggestions on how to improve things. So I welcome any suggestions. We hope that will give you an insight on the variety of tools and activities used in, here at CDS, despite the limitations uh, in a blended learning and distance learning context. And we're starting with Laura, Laura Lacey. She's our lecturer in systems engineering. Uh, she used to be a course director as well uh, for the systems engineering course. Um, her background, uh, well, she's, she's an engineer by career. She's been an engineer for over 20 years. The last three years of it, she was teaching on an um, aerosystem engineering uh, course. Her topic, specialist topic, was propulsion. It's all very exciting. Um, this was based on um, a whiteboard technology. That means basically whiteboard teaching. It means no technology. Laura got access to a virtual learning environment for the first time when studying a, a, a PG cert, postgraduate certificate in, in education. Um, she was starting to teach um, at Cranfield, uh, think about uh, 
when we moved over from Blackboard to Moodle. So she's been using Moodle since 2007 when we migrated to Moodle. The student demographics. Um, Laura teaches on, on quite a few courses, um, a few master's courses, four engineering courses, one acquisition and airworthiness course using Moodle, and another course Laura teaches uh, uses Blackboard, as, as um, Sam mentioned, uh, it's based on the other site for County University. Most students, as we said before, are mature postgraduate students, large, large proportion of students from military related industry background and military background. Most of them are part time. Um, that means on site for a week at a time of intention, intensive teaching. They will have time before that to use the DLE for pre reading uh, and after for assessment. Some of them are full time as well. Um, Laura's thoughts on Moodle. Well, for her, uh, first confronted with it, the biggest problem is to manage what's available. As, as a lecturer, it's easy to give too much material, is what she said. Um, it enables very quick feedback on what the students have taken away from the teaching week, uh, targeting further teaching improvements. And we'll show you some of the things Laura used and the examples of used to, to do that. Um, it's useful for revision tools. Uh, she loves the drag and drop into folders and easy renaming, very useful. And this is because we've just moved to Moodle 2.5 from 1.9 last year. So we didn't have all the drag and drop and um, easy renaming before. Um, it's, um, she says it's an issue that we can't change the background color for dyslexic students. Now, we know there are plugins for that, but when we tested initially, it wasn't working well. So we will be looking for the next release of our Moodle and to the accessibility block, for example. Uh, compared to Moodle, because Laura's got the experience with Blackboard, she found that Blackboard not enhancing students in, in any way. The biggest problem for her in Blackboard is how difficult the assignment feedback was using rubrics and um, as well as making just making material available to students. So she found it a lot easier to use Moodle, which is a good sign. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> now, in terms of content layout, then that's just a, a three quick um, screenshots of um, what Laura told us. I mean, we, we interviewed a few academics and there's way too much to put into one uh, presentation. We chose a few um, um, quick bites for you. This content layout here um, is, is a, as I said earlier, a menu, typical menu. All the courses uh, will have a template. So all the modules for one course, I think program, is a Moodle course. Uh, so that's one module. and all of them will have a similar template. So the students will know uh, both by the typical titles they will get, so lecture notes, module introduction, timetable, et cetera, um, and the icons where they are and where to find their material in the page. Um, the aim for, for Laura is to provide easy access to all the presentation for students in this instance, and that's basically the repository function of, of Moodle, so what everybody uses as, as a basis. Um, one of the courses she teaches on the Defense Acquisition Management, which turns out to be the DAM course, uh, DAM students download their presentation as PDF for Moodle a week before the lectures. Uh, so they have basically to download all the presentations so it's ready to annotate. And this is a way of getting around the bandwidth issues. So it, they can't just rely on downloading it straight away during the lecture. They have to download it before and make sure it's on their tablets, laptops any mobile device they've got to annotate uh, before. Mm. Laura uses the one topic per page um, um, uh, section types uh, format due to the large amount of material and activities she presents, but also so that the students can concentrate on a specific topic. Here at the bottom, this has been taken by one of these the modules. Um, you can see a uh, part of her pre-reading um, area. She will present in the pre-reading material things like open source math links, links to the core text on the library website, um, papers to read, as well as setting expectations and how long the students uh, should spend on activity. And that's one thing Laura is uh, quite keen on, is actually giving a narrative around the, the documents, around the activities, it, trying to get them to, um, to, to know what she's expecting from them. And, and, she does say that you've got to talk to the students and you've got to tell them what you want them to do with the natural and Moodle. Um, so, and the last thing about this is that she displays the material into a folder structure within the page itself, which is not 
common practice of, of all our lecturers. She likes doing that because she can order things um, as she wants by just renaming the files and a Moodle will order the file names alphabetically. Um, another example uh, of what Laura does, and it's referring back to what I said earlier uh, when she um, said uh, she gets easy feedback from the teaching week. Um, the session before what they call a wash-up session, the last session in the week, on the Friday is used for consolidation work. And Laura sets up a series of questions as choice activity. You can see an example here. Uh, the students answer those using their iPads, tablets, laptops, um, as a self-assessment exercise, trying to rely on the Wi-Fi then. Um, Laura can then show the spread of answers to the student without picking on anyone. So if they were to raise their hands in a classroom, it wouldn't work, uh, but um, it, it does uh, actually with, with Moodle, it helps her. It also gives her feedback afterwards to reflect on the course. Laura actually uses a variety of activities in this module and other modules, quiz with the overall feedback and simple feedback to guide the students back to the correct reading source to assess their pre-reading. Um, and also forums to raise any issues in one specific module. But Laura's favourite activity is the wiki. Uh, she's made use of the wiki activity to encourage group work in this instance with students in a classroom. This is a classroom-based activity where she splits the students into groups and they will go and research a topic and populate a wiki. Um, she's created uh, specific guides uh, she's actually linked to the Moodle.org for one of them, and the rest she's actually created guides and instructions, um, uh, such as do not delete others' work and things like that. But also she's created a template here. Um, and uh, they work from, from this, creating the empty pages initially, and they will have to go and create their page and add their references. She insists that they are references to, to try and encourage them to get good practice. They master students and they have to try and make sure they got references, but also it will encourage their revision later. They can go back to their references and, and, and read up. Each group comes up with slightly different outputs. Um, they, in this case, there were two groups and they were set as separate. And at the end uh, of the week on a Friday morning, Laura will set them as visible uh, so they can all see each other's work. Uh, she does find the wiki is the best tool available in, in Moodle. Um, so now some do's and don'ts uh, to her top tips. Uh, first of all, she says, be prepared to write some guides, simple guides, and with instructions and screenshots. She's really keen on pictorial description, not just lists. Um, take the time to show the students specific activities in your page. So show them, talk to them about it, give a narrative. Um, give yourself time to ask uh, and ask the support team for help, that's us. <laughs> She comes to see us with questions. Uh, she says, use the Moodle all pages, they're brilliant. Uh, make sure you switch your role to students to see what they can see. And that's quite um, a, an important thing she, 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 she says to do. Don't assume your students know how to use Moodle. Don't assume it will be quick for them to pick up the skills. Now we're referring to these mature students uh, who sometimes return to studies and haven't used the VLE for much technology in their life. Don't reflect upon uh, the act do reflect upon the activities, sorry, but don't assume everything will work straight away. Uh, use that to learn from your mistakes and, and try it again with, with student feedback and in, incrementing every year and, and improving it. Laura's wish list, well, she would like uh, better accessibility settings for dyslexic students, mentioned that already. And um, she also would like to um, um, transform what she uses a PDF at the moment to acronyms, and she really would like to have an easy way of um, getting um, glossaries. So she wants to co do a complete glossary for the next development of, her, of one of her courses. Yeah, I agree, Shane. It's it's great to actually listen to the lecturers talk about their love of Moodle and what they really enjoy about it. So um, when we did sit and interview them, there was only meant to be like a 30 minute um, sort of interview, like chat, informal chat, and they lasted. We spent hours. Spent hours. And we, they, can't, we can't tell you all about it, there's so much. <laughs> yeah, they were just, they, they were very excited to share their stories with us. They were very, very fortunate to have them. So um, this uh, is another one of our wonderful academics. This is uh, Ruth Massey. So she's currently doing her uh, PhD. She should be finishing um, this summer, which is quite exciting. So Ruth is a former student of Cranfield. Um, and then she went and spent uh, 11 years working uh, in the business sector, working on business uh, continuity software. So um, with her 
um, currently where she is at the moment, she's got a, a fellowship to go and do a PhD. And where she's actually studying her PhD, that university uses Moodle. So she has her business background of using technology to connect people. She's got her um, hat on. Yeah, so she's got her student hat on where she's using Moodle as well, which is fantastic. But now she's using Moodle to teach her own cohort students. So her students are slightly different to Laura's, um, but in, you know there are similarities as well, such as they do a very short, intense on-campus residential, um, and then everything else after that is done online. Um, she has three cohorts running throughout the year and at, um, at different stages, and each cohort has about 50 students in them. So if you imagine a residential with 50 students, and then they're off online um, and they probably won't see each other again for a long time, if at all. Um, during the residential, so when they're on campus, Ruth tries her best to get them to work in teams so that when they do go uh, away to their corners of the world, they, um, they have the confidence to connect and talk to each other and communicate online. Um, her students, um, she says that they are professionals who do really tough jobs. So this is cyber security. So it's a little, a little thinking, what's the brain power? Um, the average student is 40, um, about 89%, 90% male, um, and also 90% of those students come from the uniformed military sector, which means that they can be deployed anywhere in the world at sometimes at quite a short notice. So her current cohort, she has students that are based in the Falkland Islands, Spain, Italy, Northern, Northern Scotland, America, and other places. And in fact, um, she thinks only two of her students are actually from um, the, the local area. It's like running an iron work constantly. Yeah, <laughs> constantly. Um, all of her students, uh, she says, are experts in their field. So they have um, you know, their own slices of knowledge. Um, and what uh, she feels is that her job is to get her students to communicate with each other and share their own slices because the slices are so diverse. Um, so she likes to get them to talk to other students and share their knowledge. So, like I said, she feels that using Moodle First as a student in combination with her business background has helped her gain a good idea of how she could use Moodle to support her own teaching practices. However, when you know, she, she says when she first started off, all she did was upload slides and PowerPoints and Word documents. And the same as any lecturer, that's how I started as well. You just upload documents, it's the easiest thing to learn, and then you can get stuff. So it was through talking to other lecturers, she, she got to see how they were using quizzes and forums and other tools and start to incorporate them in their teaching. And she also feels that she couldn't actually teach this course if it wasn't for Moodle. So I've got some examples here of activity, uh, things that she uses Moodle for, for the face-to-face -face classes. So this is during the um, intensive um, residential session. So this first activity here, which I think is quite a cool idea, is that she gets her students to um, all write down in 140 characters, um, like a tweet, uh, their own definition of what is cyber. And then what she does is she gets them to then pair up with another person, they, sh they look at each other's and then they redefine it and have their own joint definition. And then those pairs go and meet up with another pair. And eventually she ended up with six different definitions of what is cyber. And she just used um, her Moodle page just to record them just for um, reflective purposes. And likewise, this is what I mean by teams. So um, in this activity, they, they've been split into eight teams and they're working furiously on the flip chart paper. And, and what she's done is she's taken these flip charts, taken them back to her office because she can't take photographs of them in the classrooms because you're not allowed. Uh, and what she's done is she's taken, uh, she's converted them to images and saved them as PDFs just so they can actually see what each other has been doing, which I think is great as well. So, um, you know, as, as with any course that's delivered online, and what we're all finding here at iMoot is you've got the different time zones, you know, not everybody's at the same time. Um, she finds that asynchronous activities such as forums and wikis, um, they, al they allow students to participate more effectively regardless of their time zone. And also limited internet access because some of these students they may not see uh, 
a Wi-Fi signal for a long, long time, or it, they may not be able to get to a computer for a oh, while. They have to go to the embassy just for one day to do it. Yeah, so <laughs> so having um, activities that, uh, that can be built up um, over time work better than a live instant session like a webinar or something. Um, she says she has tried chat using the chat feature, which she thinks is brilliant. However, you know, those that can actually take part get a better experience out of it because they can interact, they can talk, they can share. However, you know, those that haven't, haven't been able to join in live can still read the conversations and try and catch up. So this is one activity that um, she um, got quite animated about with sharing. Um, like with Laura, she, you know, she's, she's liking the wiki and she's giving us a go. So um, she is a great advocate of not giving your students too much information. So it's this whole idea of helping your students to help themselves. You know, we're there to encourage learning. Uh, it's not a training course, it's a master's programme. So I'm just reading your comment, India. Right? Yeah, totally agree. Yeah, yeah, the forum's your best friend. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> forums are fantastic. Um, but yeah, in this activity, um, you know, she says if if you're going to um, try and build learning, give your students ten really good resources, and then get them to work in their groups to um, find more and share more. So here in the wiki, um, they they have to build up a, a wiki page about their um, specific sector that they've been assigned. So that way, Ruth doesn't have to fill her pages with lots of links to information. She just starts them off and the students then run with it. So the students will work in their own little groups, um, there's about six, five or six in each group. And at the end of the um, designated time frame, uh, what Ruth will do is it will then open up all the, all the wikis so that they can all see each other's. Okay, so just, just to conclude with Ruth, um, you know, her advice, her top tips, uh, and she had loads as well, but um, some of them were the same as uh, Laura's, so who didn't include them. Um, she says, do not spoon feed your students or overload them with, with resources, but give them opportunities to share their own thoughts and backgrounds and information that they find. Um, also, give them a, a, a guidance on what you expect from them, especially during the early stages. Now, she got... Um, a shock when the students were writing thousand word forum posts which as we know isn't always the best thing um, for a start you know Moodle will chuck you out if you haven't um, done anything in there for a while so she does encourage her students to write stuff in word first and then copy and paste them in the forums but also writing a thousand word response to a forum post isn't the best use yeah, exactly. So she is. She has now learnt that she's going to um, have a word limit next year. Yeah. Yeah. Next. You know, her next set of guidance. So that to keep the students on topic, instead of writing like twenty different topics in one post, no, it's you know, you've got to chunk it up. Um, her wish list. Yeah. Yeah. Totally agree. Um. <laughs> So um, her wish list items are um, being able to uh, have an easy way to download content from a Moodle page that you can work on offline and then synchronise with them afterwards. Um, it's something that Martin Guillermo said yesterday is on the uh, pipeline for Moodle 3 or 2.10, whatever one doesn't frighten you. So we're quite excited about that, and especially when it comes to internet connectivity where we are. Um, and also, um, she'd, she'd like an easy facility so that when students write a forum post, there's a prompt at the bottom to tell them now insert your references or link to the resource that you're referring to, just as a way of getting them uh, into the routine of collecting their resources for their dissertation. But, you know, I know that can be creative, and if anybody out there wants to have a go at building one, we'd be very happy. <laughs> All right. Um... The third case study is Dr. Chris Hargreaves. Um, he's a lecturer in forensic computing and recently course director for the forensic computing course as well. Um, Chris has actually studied his PhD at Cranfield University for uh, Cranfield Defense Security, so um, and, and another one who came back to teach. <laughs> uh, he taught a few lessons to begin with and then basically he's paid. He, he's now a course director for the, the forensic computing MSc. Um, in terms of student demographic, that's changing a little bit. They're not necessarily military students, although they might be police forces and, and um, um, industry professionals. Um, 
Um, there's a mix of full-time students, part-time students, and also every module that they offer in the, in the program is a, open as a short course. Uh, so they have industry professionals who are just here for a week in the mix too. They all have access to the same material on, and on-campus resources. Um, his sort of experience of Moodle, about three years ago, um, they started to use Moodle for the course. This was instigated as a positive move by the course director at the time, and the team decided this is how it will be done now. They, they just switched straight away. Um, it, as as um, Chris says, it needs to be supported by a whole course, whole policy, uh, if they're going to switch to from paper, which it was at the time, uh, because Moodle um, um, has for them, the Moodle module pages have replaced the A4 level arch folders that were produced for every module. Because if you can imagine, they had they're doing computing and they've got big A4 folders. Um, it was often um, a nightmare to update and make last minute modifications uh, to the folders. And of course, to print as well. Um, here at CDS, we have um, a two weeks notice to get graphics to print anything. So it's a nightmare if you've got last minute materials, so they would be standing next to the printer making multiple copies. So now the entire MSc is paperless. It's all delivered by, by Moodle. And all students get a student skills tutorial on digital note taking as well to support them in their study skills. Um, for them, it's just changed everything. It makes administration a lot easier as well. Uh, the forums have replaced long lists of emails they're able to give students access to more resources, provide structure to each session and make it a lot more interactive as well. Due to the nature of the course, the students are predominantly sat in front of a computer and therefore there's very little in the way of accessibility issue when it comes to using specific softwares or, or locating resources because it's all there during the week they study. Um, so in terms of um, Example of uses, um, here we've got um, the typical structure of the approach they're taking for the course. So they'll have a one topic per page, mostly um, quite a lot of sections in one page because they're covering so much material, but it suits to what they're teaching and how they're teaching it. Uh, for him, as he said, Moodle for us is not a fun repository, it's the place where you interact with, with stuff. And that was uh, very much summarizing the approach they're taking. So we've got a tiered approach to the resources layout here. We've got slides and notes, further readings, and then activities provided afterwards to embed, assimilate new knowledge, uh, which include interactive PDFs, Moodle quizzes, and any other activities that would be suitable. In fact, I remember him referring to this as the Coursera layout, wasn't it? Yeah. He said he adopted the Coursera model. Yeah. Uh, so he's got... Um, the other thing is Moodle is not the only answer to what they're doing. They've got issues with data size. When they're talking about this concept and they've got to have this image, they just can't have that on, on Moodle. And, and we haven't got a content management system either uh, yet. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so they have to store some resources locally on server and push them to students uh, um, at key points in the course to work on it. Uh, but apart from that, basically Moodle is used as a springboard to external tools and resources as well. Um, for Chris's wish list, um, what he would love to use more is the closed type quizzes, but he finds it really time consuming even for forensic sciences, believe it or not. Um, here we've got an example of something he finds very difficult or almost impossible to use um, uh, to transform into a closed type quiz. So he's got to use interactive PDF because basically he's got diagrams with, with blanks to fill in. If anybody has a solutions for this that can be done in Moodle, uh, please let us know because it would be made up to know about anything that can be done. So anything that's sort of like closed type quiz um, questions um, or things using diagrams, interactive uh, diagrams, that would be really good. And the one thing I've not mentioned actually is those quizzes, the closed type questions and other um, an interactive PDF, what they use it for and what they love about the Moodle quiz is that because they're doing it in the classroom in, in live term, um, they have um, they can see quickly from the back of the class if the students are doing okay or not. They all all like to agree if the students have got all the right answers, and it'll be all that that sort of red 
pinkish color if uh, if you got a wrong answer so they can just go straight to the student and, and ask them you know where they're struggling and, and and deal with them that way so it's very much a blended learning tool in the classroom as well um so chris's do's and don'ts um oh, Chris's heart sinks when he sees Word documents and PowerPoints uploaded to Moodle. For him, it has to be PDF. PDF makes material easier to access. There's no need to open an application, whatever platform his students are on. Uh, it's better for the user experience. They get the same experience for multiple devices. Um, so he doesn't understand, unless people have to edit something, why you would want to put a PowerPoint or a, a Word document on there. Um, and his main top tip as well is try to be a student with it, similar to what Laura said. Imagine how your students will interact with your Moodle tools and pages. So we were very fortunate to actually grab one of Chris's students. So this is Emily Bubbins. She's doing the MSc in Forensic Computing. And um, she's um, one of the exceptions to the rules when it comes to our students. She, um, she isn't from a military background. She isn't... Um, you know, working for the MOD. She's a male. Yeah, and she isn't male either, <laughs> you know. Um, she's young in her 20s. How, um, however, you know, her background was that she came... Oh, yeah, Melanie, yeah, you can't modify PDFs exactly. Yeah, um, yeah so, um, yeah, her background was that she studied uh, forensic science. Um, she then um, did a course... Well, she started the MSc in forensic ballistics because, you know, we have guns and tanks and, and weapons That's and exciting. Also, yeah, and for a forensic ballistic student, it's the perfect playground for them. However, she um, really loved the uh, introductory module to forensic computing, and she found she was, you know, very natural at doing it. So she switched degrees. Um, she loves the nature of the course, the fact that it's so intensive. Um, you know, you that there's no room for distractions, so you're constantly working. Um, so for them, Moodle is their uh, workbook. So during um, class, so they're sat in front of a you know, double screen P uh, PC and the lecturer is given the talk at the front of the slides. They've also got the slides in front of them, which they can annotate on. Um, they have, um, you know, the lecturer notes there in front of them. And then as soon as the lecturer has stopped, you know, talking, um, they can then open up the first activity and get working on it. So all the software and everything for them is there in front of them. Um, it's also a very specialist course. They do use very specialist software. So having everything there on their machine in front of them really, really suits them. And they, they really like the intensive nature. Um, as we mentioned earlier, we have bandwidth issues and things crashing, and it doesn't like everyone downloading documents at the same time. But the students are very resilient, and they've um, they, they found that the best way to deal with this is that they all agree to, you know, all download the document at the same time and they use um, this time which they know is going to slow down the network to go and get a copy and they go and have a copy and they use it for networking and to discuss what had happened so it's kind of like the group breakout session which they've done themselves um, so they see it as a really you know positive networking time so her, her thoughts are on Moodle um, she loves the fact that uh, it's Everybody gets to see the content with fresh eyes. So um, the lecturers do not release the material early. They all release it that morning. So the students come into the room, the lecturer open, uh, unhides uh, the content, and they can all go and see it with fresh eyes. Um, she, she was a bit shocked when I told her that everything used to be done uh, in an A4, you know, LibreArch ring binder, and she just couldn't imagine the course working that way. Um, because of the nature of the subject, uh, a lot of the students travel and um, they are based all around the world as well and they come in for intensive sessions and then go home again in between and she just can't imagine them dragging these giant folders around the world with them but it also means because it's online uh, they can access the material from pretty much any device so um yeah they, they quite like it so another thing that she enjoys is the forums because the students come from a very diverse background um they can actually use the forums to talk to each other so, um, so there's a mixture of full-time and part-time students, but also the uh, industry professionals that are coming in just to do um, just this one module, and that's it as a short course. So they get to actually find out each other's backgrounds and share information that way. Um, she does have a wish list item. So as uh, already said about Chris, everything is in PDFs. So what she would love is to be able to have a download all PDF button 
uh, in Moodle um, so that when you're on the Moodle page, you can just you know, bulk download anything that's been PDF'd and, and then they can save it to the machines. If anybody's got any suggestions, please let us know. <laughs> um, something a little bit different here. Um, it, it's uh, part of our team, um, uh, learning services. We provide a different set of activities from the usual sort of, um, main academic Moodle delivery. We develop e-learning products. Um, and we've got here Katie Yanaka, who is our senior learning uh, dev designer and Fran Harrison, e-learning project manager. Part of the team is set up as this e-learning design studios, and we have four multimedia designers and programmers, um, two learning designers, um, and an e-learning project manager. We also have a graphics team alongside. Uh, they develop fully distance learning packages, such as here we've got examples, we've got a military knowledge package, which is um, basically delivered to military students um, either online or on CD, depending on their locations, um, and the online packages for uh, Conflict University's Explosives, here, introduction to Explosives. Uh, yes, Explosives. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they are produced, uh, there's here we've got four lessons out of nine. We can't open nine lessons to the public, but four of them, anybody, well, almost anybody, can pay and, and go and study those, those Explosive lectures. Um, so we have... Um, 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 this is designed basically, and this is run on a VLE, the explosive one. So we get a notification of, as, as administrators, we get a notification of who's enrolled and paid for the course, and we give them um, a key to enroll in the course, basically. Um, Katie also supports the learning design for traditional academic content uh, material and activities on, on Moodle. So she doesn't only do the e learning commercial products, she's also helping academics to help designing. Uh, material for the classroom and Moodle. It's not just about Moodle, it's about the blended learning as well. So we're really lucky we've got learning designers with us um, helping us. So our roadmap. This is kind of like our wish list, but then again we have to shoehorn another Back to the Future reference because we want our badge. <laughs> but um, so a couple of things that we're looking into um, over the next year. So, yeah, um, first of all, got um, enrollments. Uh, we've just, I've just taken part in a previous session uh, uh, about issues with enrollments and rolling over courses, etc. It's been a big problem over the years. We've got uh, about, I think, about 12 to 15 programs with each will have 12 to 14 modules. We roll them over every year and we've got to keep access to those older students who will be part time. They need access for a few years on their previous studies and we get new access to new students. So the enrollment has been an issue. We recently got LDAP, which means uh, authentication, which means anybody with an IT account will get into there. It doesn't solve our problem with our short course students, those uh, who come for just a week onto a module. So we have manual enrollments for those. But coming up, hopefully, we're going to have automated enrollments, which means anybody yes. who's enrolled into a module in terms of our students' um, um, system will be automatically um, enrolled into Moodle or Moodle. And this is very much in the making. We should have a fingers crossed with the next upgrade of, of Moodle when we're grading the summer. Um, yeah, so another thing we're looking at is um, at the beginning, I said that every student has to have an IT induction. And part of that IT, IT induction, they have an introduction to the systems that are available to them. They have a Moodle induction, but they also have a Turnitin induction. And because um, the uh, induction is very, very quick, a lot of information overload, the students are given an activity where they have to carry out, well, they have to um, do a Turnitin quiz. Yeah. And um, they submit, they submit and, a Turnitin paper. Yeah. yeah. And so they, they go through the motions of it. And the, the problem is um, staff, uh, the lecturers don't actually know whether or not they've done this. So. Um, what we're thinking of introducing is a badge so that all the lecturer needs to do is, um, you know, go to the student profile to see whether or not they've done it. If they have a, if they have the open badge for their term of induction, that they know they've done it. It also means that those who not sometimes don't really bother doing it um, will have a little bit of motivation to do it. Yeah. And so in the future, if a student complains and says, oh, I never got a term of induction, I didn't know what I was doing. We could say, well, you didn't do your induction activity. So yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, and, and the other thing is, um, 
we sort of want to move away from Teletium. Well, we don't want to move away from Teletium. We've got issues with support with them. And um, we want to basically future-proof our relationship with them. And uh, one of the things we'd like to do is to move from the full direct plugin to HS Plagiarism plugin, giving us the choice if we wanted to move away from Teletium to, to get different Plagiarism plugin provider and keep our assessments material, um, rubrics, everything within Moodle itself, which at the moment is all in great mark of Turnitin. Um, so that's another thing for the future for us, and then we'd really welcome any advice on that. Um, um, we're looking into you know testing some of that under Moodle 2.8, but it sounds a little bit of a daunting um, task, and we basically have to con convince some managers that's the way forward and that's better for you know risk avoidance in the future. And then finally, um, I said at the beginning, we've just got an installation from Hara. Um, I'm hopefully going to be looking for lecturers who are interested. Um, so far, we've had a couple um, that have said, come up with ideas of what they'd like to do. So um, hopefully, yeah, this time next year, we might be able to do something on Mahara. Yay! Yay! <laughs> <laughs> right. Oh, there we go. So we've now come to the end. Um, I, I know it, we took up nearly a whole hour and probably not enough time for questions, but we'd love to hear your questions if you have any. Um, yeah, I hope you enjoyed it. Um, we've got a combined email address down here. So if you if you think, oh, I don't know which one to email, just email back because we both get access to that. So that's the Flexible Learning Help um, email address. Any questions, suggestions? Thanks for all the suggestions in, in the chat already. We'll be recording that. Mm. The guidelines. Right. Um, all your templates. We yeah, love your templates. we've got our templates. And the other thing we do is that we've got a meeting with every course director on a annual basis before each course starts, basically. And it's quite intensive spending time with them as, as a course team, basically. And we do have... Um, um, a, a dialogue. So we tell them what we've got on a template, what new improvements have been happening in Moodle, and how it can help them. Um, we're, what we have, what I want to develop, and I've been wanting to develop that for years, but is getting the right um, place in the institution to actually get it back to the lecturers. Is a what should be in your page a, a Moodle page specification, and that's the next step as well as part of that roadmap that we need to do. Yeah, um, for the wiki, uh, Laura gives them uh, that template. Let's see if I can go back to it. She's just done, you know, some clip arts, basically. Um, yeah. And um, she just has set up this essay, SEMP and TLMP, which are the two subjects she, she, um, she gets them to look at. And she gets, that's the very first page of the wiki. And she's got titles, and initially you've got the brackets on these because the pages don't exist, uh, and these all the questions. And then the students will click on these and effectively create their pages. So that's the template in that sense. They've got something to a starting point, um, and she's, they've got the references to, to populate. Again, that initially is just the brackets, so they've got. Um, the yeah. And this is something that we'll probably talk to Ruth about because um, Ruth's wiki, they've started from scratch with nothing there, and I. It's gone wild. It's gone wild. <laughs> it's gone very wild. And she's wanted it to look like a Wikipedia setup. And I don't think it's quite worked in the way that she wants it to. But as with anything, it's a learning curve. And um, hopefully we can share with her some of the stuff that Laura's done so that she can then you know, reevaluate what she's done for the next um, program for students. Yeah, the wiki template, by the way, um, for those who roll over courses from one occurrence to the next, like we do, it's a bit of a pain to do because you have to roll over with uh, student data and then remove stuff manually from what the students have done. Uh, so it has been a bit of a pain, but it's worth it. What we've done is we created a master of it for, for Laura when she used it and then we rolled over that master one uh, in the end because we had issues uh, with that. Somebody earlier, oh, I heard the comment. Somebody said, I wish the, my, my instructor did something like that. Was it shit? Oh, was it? That's all. It, yeah. So uh, some of my interests is gone, and and actually, you know, what we're showing you is the best ones. Oh yeah, we, we're not going to show you the rubbish ones. We do have a lot of people that still use Moodle Pages as repositories, um, but what I was saying is most people do use it. 
uh, whether it's just assessment and repository, because most assignments, well, all assignments really, have to be within the VLA, within Turnitin. Um, they get to, to have the page and the students will expect things to be on there, even if it's just the learning outcomes and some slides. Um, so the wikis are group wikis. Yeah. So this one, uh, Laura's one, is it two groups? There was two groups, yeah. there's this one. So she sets the groups into Moodle and it automatically fits into the, uh, and then she makes it visible at the end of the week. Yeah, whereas Ruth's, um, she had her eight groups having their own one based on one topic and then shared with um, the rest of them. Oh, uh, to allocate the activity. Mm. Yeah. And that's I'm great, sorry. since last year we've got that now. <laughs> Anymore. We still have, obviously, if people haven't, haven't got time now, the forum uh, where people are actually watching these as a repeat because they couldn't catch us today. We don't hesitate to interact. The forum will be available, you know, in the next few hours, next few days, in there, and uh, able to answer any questions. Because we've got other sessions that we want to watch yeah. <laughs> as well. So we will be online for a little bit longer. <laughs> All right, thank you, Doc. Thank you, Doc. Shane here. I'll just I'll quickly jump in and, and just say thank you on behalf of the whole, whole IMOC team. And I uh, really did enjoy it, and there's some great ideas in there. And um, I'm sure a lot of people are going to watch the replay of this. So um, thank you very much for your time. All right, thank you. Bye -bye. Oh, and do we get our badge? <laughs> Well, you, you, you could create your own badges within your Moodle course on this site, actually. Well, we could, but we want our Back to the Future badge. <laughs> yeah. I, while you were talking, I actually did download a picture of the DeLorean. I thought maybe I could create a badge on the fly, but I didn't have enough time to do it. <laughs> but you could do it within your course on this site. Well, yeah. <laughs> well, thanks, everyone. Bye. Thank you.